Hey guys, so this is a follow-on video based on the previous video that I made. I posted a video about the PSEI uh, saying that it was massively down, more than 26%. So I said at the end of that video that I will discuss some stocks that have or is moving contrary to where the index is. And I want to highlight Metro Pacific Investments. I want to talk about it for this video. So if you guys have MPI, you guys have Metro Pacific Investments, comment below. Comment if you were able to spot this as well, that it was moving on a different direction from as compared to where the index was going. Comment below if, if you were able to see this from a charting perspective. So uh, for those who are basically new to stocks or new to this channel as well, I've been talking about MPI also since uh, for, the, for the longest time already. And uh, if you all know the story and the narrative from 2019, uh, MPI had a very, very large drop at the end of the year. So the large drop, drop at the end of the year was basically this, this, then all the way here, and this as well. This was pretty much predicated on all of the news. If you remember, late last year, Duterte had a tirade or, tirade, or he, w he went up against Manila Water and Manilad. And as you all know, Manilad is uh, owned in portion by uh, MPI and DMC also has a portion in it. That's why you also saw, saw uh, DMC sl uh, slide down for a bit. But that being said, there's a couple of things that we could see from here. And as you all know, uh, the style and the narrative on why I do it or how I analyze my stocks is basically based on uh, technical analysis as well. So one thing, if we look at this chart and we'll try to analyze it further, there are a couple of things that we could see right now. Number one, uh, cause of the sell down, you saw the stock uh, dropped as low as 2.6, 2.7 uh, on that day. And for those who like to use candlestick candlestick pattern, this uh, this two combinations, uh, this large red candle and this uh, large green candle was a very, very bullish reversal signal, which was a bullish signal upward. Then after that, you saw the stock move up. So the entire downward movement of uh, of Manila Water, you know, if I'll try to measure it from, let's try to look at the peak. So at least you have, at least context as well. So around this area, 2016, it's been down already for almost four years. Uh, MPI has hit a low of almost 61.9%. But after it hit 2.69, uh, we're seeing MPI from its lowest point here uh, rally and go above, go around 42%. So what does this mean? Those who bought 2.6, 2.7 from this bullish reversal, uh, we're able to profit around 42.1%. So as you all know, stocks don't go up forever. As you all know, also stocks that when certain people earn money, when certain people uh, have a chance to, to get a profit, especially if there's a lot of concern. Please remember the biggest concern for MPI is basically there's still uncertainty for Manila. There's still uncertainty for Manila Water. Uh, whatever regulations are there, whatever uh, contracts that need to be done, and, and people are still um, anxious on how it will go and how it will play out. It's just that over the past few weeks, there really hasn't been a lot of news about it because the coronavirus has been taking a large pre precedent in all of the news that's happening. But but as you all know, when when there's uncertainty, people would want to take profits as well. So when so once it started to hit the 3.8, 3.9 level, you saw a level of take profits happen. That being said, I'll try to put in the 20-day moving average also. You see that here, and I'll try to put in the 100-day moving average as well. So if you try to underline, if you try to underline it, this is where this is where we are right now. But that's let me continue it further. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Let me continue this. At this point in time, it tried to push up. As it tried to push up, there's a couple of things that we could see. Uh, it formed a resistance of 3.8, then it started to go down again. As it started to go down, we're now seeing MPI try to build a support at the 3, 3.1 level. It, hit, it built a support here, broke down last Feb, tried to go up, stay, stay at the 3.1 level, broke down. But ultimately, at the start of March, it started to break out again. This one, though, was confirmed also by this. For those who attended our stock smart sessions, you know what this signal means, what this change of direction means, and what, as you can see also that um, the MACD started to open up. It means that there's a upward momentum headed up, head uh, upward direction with momentum headed upward. So this this got confirmed with this as well. You have a breakout from the 50-day moving average, and you have a breakout here. So there's a couple of things that make this look interesting. Is primarily because it broke out from the 50-day moving average, primarily because MACD is showing us a change in direction, primarily also because it's also above the 20-day moving average. So it did not just break out from the 3.1 
resistance, it also broke out from the 20-day moving average and it also broke out from the 50-day moving average. So this particular movement, this series of movements was predicated by the indecision plus the reversal pattern that we saw here. So this is another reversal pattern uh, showing us that there's a buy signal in this area, this one plus this, then the breakouts from this moving average, then you have this. So this particular area showed you that there are particular buyers coming into the stock at this point in time. Then after that, it broke out from the 50-day moving average, then large green candle, red candle, but please remember this, this red candle should not be a cause of alarm for you. This red candle should be something that will allow you to still hold the stock. Why? Because it's still above the support level. It's still above the 20 and the 50-day moving average as well. So please remember the goal and the technique here. As long as there's no signals yet causing you to uh, sell, as long as those uh, support levels are still are still pretty much intact, you're not supposed to take action, you're not supposed to do anything, you're not supposed to take profits. Then after that, March 6, uh, yesterday, you have this very, very, very large uh, bullish candle as well, allowing MPI to close at the 3.6 level. Now, here's what makes it what makes this interesting. Uh, as you all know from the previous portion that I mentioned, the 3.8 level poses a resistance for it. Now, from here to here, if you look at it, the upside is very, very small, very, very narrow. If we're gonna try to see how how much of a percentage is it, it's only three percent. So, what 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 does this mean to all of us? Should there be any selling that will happen for MPI? Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week. Uh, one of the biggest determinants is not just because of the coronavirus, but one of the biggest determinants is, please remember, it's very, very close to the resistance as well. And if there's one thing we do know, when stocks are very, very close to the resistance, there's a, le there's a level of selling that's happening. And if I'll try to measure it from the breakout from the 20-day moving average and the breakout from the uh, 3.1 resistance level, it's still a decent 22.3% gain. So again, Close to this level, you may expect a level of profit taking because it's close to the resistance. So possible narrative is basically this. If it tries to go here or at least close to this and it fails to break out, you may expect the stock start to probably retrace and go here uh, to the 50-day moving average or if selling becomes relatively stronger still, uh, it might go down to the 3.1 level. So as you all know, the trend is still the strongest determinant of how things will go. And if you look at it here, uh, this doesn't really look like an uptrend to all of you. This looks like if you look at and try to connect the highs from it, if you try to connect this and this, you see it sloping downward with the 200-day moving average as a very, very strong resistance. And 200-day moving average showing you that it's still bearish. And this line to prevent which will act as a very, very strong resistance. So uh, main trend still is bearish. Uh, the underlying theme for this is still bearish as well. But if there's one thing that I know is this. Our goal is not to speculate or forecast the markets, but we could place conditions on how we're supposed to deal deal with it. Meaning, if the 3.8 level is not broken, you own the stock already, you're okay to take profits. If the 3.8 level is not broken, you have cash, uh, stay out first. If it fails to get broken, then stay out first and be in cash first as well. But if the more optimistic scenario uh, would possibly happen, the next possible thing, the next possible narrative that you can have is basically this. Allow me to remove this first. But you see it clearer. So if it breaks past the 3.8 level, the next possible shot is it tries to break out and hit either the 200-day moving average or the 4.4 level resistance level. So how does this play and what, what does this do to all of us? Breakout from 3.8, target price is the 200-day moving average or the 4.4 resistance level. But for those who bought from the breakout of the 20-day moving average and 3.1 level, you can hold your position. And this will give you now a 42.4% upside. Breakout from the 3.8 level to the 4.41 level, this will give you around a 16.2% upside. So those are the things that you need to weigh in uh, when should things like that happen. Uh, as you, as you all know, the name of the game here, again, is never to predict and forecast how things will possibly go. The name of the game is really just to uh, look at the charts as it is. And if you look at it further also, the, the largest support level for MPI is now at the 1.8 level. We're still very, very far from it because of the bullish moves that it had, uh, short-term bullish moves that it's currently having. Other than that... Uh, other than that, just respect the support and resistance level. So just to recap everything, number one, 
uh, support, biggest support level now is 2.69, followed by 3.12. Then you have resistances at 3.8 and 4.4. Uh, the, the, the breakout that has happened so far is a breakout from the 20-day moving average, breakout from the 50-day moving average, then MACD, and also the breakout from the 3.1 level are showing us signs of more bullish movements upward. But for it to progress, it must break out from this resistance level, number one, 3.8. The 200-day moving average, the 4.4 uh, resistance level, and this major trend line that I plotted here, which uh, which we haven't broken yet. Now, please remember from here, from January 2018, then it tried to challenge it, September 2019. Uh, from from that point in time to where we are today, it, fail, it has not bre broken out from those levels still. So those are the things you need to consider for MPI from a chart perspective. I hope you're learning from this. I hope that you like this format, raw unedited also no music no no intro no anything comment below if you like this it's uh, by the way i'm filming this 2 a.m manila time this will be out around 11 a.m uh, in manila uh, on the same day my, my voice is a bit husky because uh, a bit tired already from all of the activities i just landed uh yesterday from um uh, from a college city but um, I've, I've gotten a lot of comments. I've gotten a lot of messages about MPI. I just felt it was this is something that I need to put out as well because I, I'll never stop creating content for you guys. And just a quick plug also for those who want to join me in my events, if you want to know more about technical analysis, you just go to the description below. I have events in Manila, London, uh, Sydney, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Doha, Dubai, Tokyo. All of those are in the links below or in the description below. You just have to click the link for you to be part of the sessions. Then second, I have online courses with Jingitan and uh, Sean C. It's called Make Money, Grow Money with Sean C. It's business, entrepreneurship, and investing. And for Jingitan, it's a uh, stock market for everyone. It's the basics of the stock market as well. All of the details are in the description below. And lastly, uh, if you want to learn technical analysis, all of these charting sessions that I'm doing uh, in, via, via books, if you want to learn via books, you can just go to the link below as well or in the description where we, we have five books talking about the basics of the stock market, all with one goal, to help you guys win and trade the markets with confidence. So uh, please remember this. Miralco is a fundamental sound company. Um, Filipinos will have to use their service. Manila, the same thing. Filipinos have to use their service. Hospitals, MPI own, owns hospitals. They will use their services as well. Toll roads, same thing. Uh, they will, they're, they're very much of a very, very defensive company. So... The, please remember the only reason why MPI dropped massively was because of the uncertainty for my NILAD. But either way, they have so much assets and so much recurring revenue. And it's just really the fear of what's happening locally in the country that has caused it to drop down. That's why if you notice it also, while the market was going down, while the majority of the stocks were going down, MPI was not going down anymore because it's dropped from 26 uh, from from seven to two point six. Two point six was relatively and massively cheap already at around four and a four point five. MPI was still also massively cheap as well. So, uh, your goal right now is to determine what will be your plan, what will be your strategy. If you're an investor, uh, look at the numbers, look at the earnings, and if you want to take in the risk premium of how, uh, what the government contracts will be for MPI, and you think it will. Farewell, farewell for my Nila, then this could be a, still a good opportunity for you to come in. But if you think uh, things won't be good for my Nila, things won't go well for my Nila, uh, then as an investor, you may stay away. For position traders, though, uh, let's wait for further reversal patterns for the stock. But for quick traders, that's what we discussed in the whole intent and narrative of this video. This video is basically for quick traders who want who wanted to buy from the breakout from the 3.1 level and are setting their target prices at 3.8 to 4.4 pesos per share so i guess that's it i hope you guys learned a lot from this i'm gonna make another video another stocks by request but just comment the stock that you want the, the most uh, the stock with the most votes is what i'm gonna uh, feature in the next video so just comment the stock that you want me to analyze and then we're gonna make it happen as you all know i just want you guys to win i want more filipinos to be able to trade the markets with confidence because at the end of the day it can be done if filipinos can win filipinos can use the stock market to help them reach their goals of financial freedom it all just entails you following the right rudiments following the right strategy and using technical and fundamental analysis so that you don't have to rely on hype speculation, but you can have the firm conviction to be able to trade on your own because nothing beats 
the conviction and the confidence being able to analyze your stocks on your own by your own narrative and having the confidence of knowing the trade based on your own analysis, based on your own conviction without um, hesitating, without relying on what other people are telling you as well. So I guess that's it for now. Uh, we're now at the 15-minute mark, close to the 15-minute mark. I hope that this is, this is something that added tremendous value to all of you. Comment I stayed if you stayed throughout the video without editing, without any fluff, without any music. But I hope this video uh, gave so much value to you as well. So I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. Marvin Germo, 2 a.m. Manila time. I hope this video helps you and see you all again soon.